No one likes us clothing is the Millwall clothing range. T-shirts, caps, polos, they've got it all. Visit www.noonelikesus.co.uk or why not visit the Blue Anchor where a selection of shirts can be bought at the bar. www.noonelikesus.co.uk Hi, I'm Gary Rowett, and you're listening to the world-famous Acton Millwall. Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to Something for the Weekend, uh, starring myself, Nick Hart, but also my confederates, my, 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 my partner in crime, Mr. Neil Fisler. How are you, Neil? We're back. We're back after an international break, everybody purgatory wasn't it we were just saying off air listeners neil and i um about the the i don't know it, it, it's a it's a weird thing international football these days neil i i find it's it's so in every sense of the word it's so commercially driven now um it's very hard to maintain any level of interest in it yeah i'm not invested at all in international football as i said to you uh off air uh it's just dull it's boring and uh, and even though you're grateful for the international break that gratefulness lasts about an hour and a half <laughs> <laughs> well you do we, we miss doing these shows uh, we we're just saying that off air listeners um i miss millwall uh even though it, it can drive you to distraction i was just looking at all of my notes for for the show today and of course gary rowett has done his bit for <laughs> <laughs> for for the for the kind of purgatory of football, um, and then Gareth Southgate has completed the task during the international break. But football is about joy, and it should be about joy. But all I see in the in the modern football scene, Neil, is I mean we're playing a, a World Cup, uh, uh, you know, in the middle of the winter from our point of view because of money. It's money, money, money. All it is is methods of um, extracting money from the paying public and. There's something quite distasteful about it all. I don't know if I'm being sentimental when I say these things, but I don't think I'm alone in, in feeling this way. Mate, the one saving grace about this international break was at least the county championship season rumbled on until yesterday. <laughs> yeah. so we had something quite entertaining to watch for for most of this week, obviously, Middlesex. I'm still on the high after Middlesex getting promoted. Yeah, they, they were promoted from the second division of Cricket's County Championship for any listeners that don't follow it. I, the thing I'd say, I mean, I, this is this is a football podcast, not a cricket podcast, listeners, but um, I, I went in the, in the summertime, Neil, to a, a competition that's failing now, the Royal London, which is a 50-over um, one-day game. I really like that format. It's, it's a nice format but we my daughter and I and, and uh family went over to Beckenham and it was just a beautiful day. I mean the weather was gorgeous it was really hot but it was there was something um I don't know what's the word I'm trying to find it is deeply non-commercial about this this afternoon it, it was it was a cricket match in the sun in a leafy wonderful little location it was it was everything for me that cricket should be um very English about English yeah it's a bit of our, I don't know, a bit of our national identity that hasn't been eroded and that you can go somewhere on a Sunday afternoon or or an afternoon in the weekend and uh, and you can enjoy the sun. You can just sit there and it, there's no pressure with cricket, is there? I find it very difficult to get upset at a cricket result, which for me I'm probably unusually uh <laughs> to my county uh but it, yeah there's just something quintessentially english about a game of cricket in an afternoon isn't there I think what we're touching on, I mean, there was money being made there, listeners. There was, there was, uh, you know, all the usual kind of stadium van uh, foods and bars, and you know, there was there was money changing hands. So don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not advocating a world where nobody makes any money, but it's it was it was just a lovely event. I'm going to include some of the non-league games that I've been to recently. I mean, I, you know, you and me were talking about you, you went to a game down your way to cut the uh, one of the Cornish um, leagues that in, in, in your part. What I've been to one or two. That's Definitely, do not Devon. Devon, oh my god, I've, I've Christ dropped... almighty, my windows will be going. 
<laughs> I dropped a bollock there, haven't I? <laughs> the, the Devonian leagues. But, you know, I mean, the, the point I'm touching on there is, that you, you know, I've been to a few non-league games. You're not invested in it. I, I will say that. You're not caring about it like when the Lions take the pitch of a Saturday, like the song says, at Coldblow Lane. You're not caring about it, not living and dying on the result. But there is something deeply enjoyable about a relaxing afternoon sport where you're not being separated from your the contents of your wallet every five minutes for some reason or another. You know, you could get a beer, you can go and watch it in the stands, you can enjoy the yeah, the standard is, is what it is. Um, but you're gonna see committed blokes playing a game that they love. And I, I, I don't know, we're missing something in football generally, I, all the way up the the, the 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 ladder, right to the very, very top, because we're playing a World Cup completely out of season um very very soon in fact we 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 speak in the uh, prelims neil to tomorrow's trip for the lions to blackburn which actually opens up another 10 game um program 10 game tranche i've written on my notes listeners 10 game tranche up to the world cup break itself which starts in uh, november so it's been a very odd season with these 10 game periods and breaks and then we've got another one coming up it's actually a difficult away game tomorrow after a fortnight off, um, in the aftermath of what was, I don't know, are we are we getting a, are we getting ideas above our station to call that win over Blackpool unsatisfactory? A win's a win from a Mill perspective historically, Mill. and I don't know if I'm being spoiled baby by wanting more than just um, functional wins. I want to be entertained. I think I think maybe that's what I'm I'm trying to scramble towards in this monologue. Mate, we all wanna. Yeah, it's always about performance, isn't it? And uh, we want to watch and play well. But I think we need to be asking, what Muppet organised an international break a month before the World Cup? Yeah, when they're suspending the championship for yeah, lots of yeah. weeks. Although we have got a game, I think we'll come on to that a little bit later against Sunderland. Yeah. But obviously, we're playing 10 times in the next month. Yeah, it's a um, packed calendar when you look at the BBC site. It's a packed calendar that's going to hamper uh, the the quality of football. Yeah, and inju- a- injuries. I mean, you know, we, we've we've laboured with injuries all season, Neil. It, it's going to compound that. What idiot organised an international break so they could play a pointless tournament, the Nations League or whatever it? Board. The penny should have dropped somewhere, and they should have. Hold on a minute. Yeah, uh, why are we it's, having this? Uh, because all as it's done is it just keeps more a bigger workload on players for the next month. So they so they're going to go to the World Cup knackered, whatever. And uh, yeah, it'll probably take us three months to recover all the injuries, won't from it? From the World Cup. I mean, it's money, money, money. Um, they pack in. You're right. I mean, I, I think I, I I can get the idea of a Nations League over and above friendly football, which I, I, is my own pet hate. I, I, but the Nations League is barely above that in, in the sense of any competitive um, quality to it. It's a filler competition. It's money. It's TV. It's... Uh, it's modern football in, in a nutshell. I, I make you right. I mean, to have an international break when you've got a four-week enforced break looming for a World Cup being played in the winter because Qatar brings such uh, resources that they can buy themselves a World Cup. Um, it, it just speaks volumes for the modern game. There we are. That's 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 the way it is. We're not going to change it on, on this podcast in a hurry, but I do agree it's it, it's got a, an impact. And we're going to be, you know, we're only just recovering. I'm just reading that Sean Hutchinson may be available. Uh, Mason Bennett may be available for the trip to Ewood Park, may be available for the midweek game at Rotherham that follows on, on, the, on the Wednesday. Um, you know, we, we've laboured under an injury crisis, it seems, forever at our club, and it's not going to exactly be helped by these, these 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 stop start and you know overloaded fixture programs that we have to work within now. There yep. we are, biggest squad in the world, have we? And it is a squad that you do fear that uh, that that we do seem to sign players with some pretty woeful injury records at times, don't we? And- yeah, Ryan Leonard is, is is still in recovery. Um, he's kind of inching his way back. I was just reading on uh, London News Online, listeners. Mason and, and Sean H- and Hachi will uh, possibly be fit for you, whether they'll be on the bench or whether they'll start, we'll, we'll see. Um, 
it's been it, i'm just looking at the league table now i actually wrote in my notes before i looked at the league table this has been a moderate start to the season for Millwall. four wins one draw and five losses but there's loads of clubs with what i would call moderate starts in the in the league i think we're not alone in that we we obviously look at the world for our Millwall um lenses but uh we're not alone. I mean, even our opponents tomorrow, Blackburn, haven't exactly torn up the league. They're in seventh spot, listeners, with five wins and five losses. So it seems to be a thing, doesn't it, generally? Yeah, but apparently it's a better start than last season, isn't it? Didn't we take a long time as I listening on another podcast? I don't think we're that far away from it. Whether, how, how much better or worse it is, I, I, there's not much in it. So it's, it's not an awful lot in it from last season, which, as as the point was made, didn't finish too badly for us. So, um, you know, in, in, in Rowett, I think we're going to have to trust because there was a talk prior to that win over Blackpool, not Blackburn, Blackpool, um, that Garrett Rarick's position may be in, uh, in danger. Um, I don't think that's realistic anymore, Neil, do you? No, I don't think so. I think that we're stuck with him for... (laughs) (laughs) We'd have loved this marriage, aren't we? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, for better or worse, I think think he's around for a little while. Uh, Yeah, but I just think it's sometimes that you watch games and it's it's just frustration that you speak in the aftermath of a game and in the cold light today, you think, well... He's a decent manager. Yeah, are we going to get better? Probably not. Probably not. People actually come up with these fanciful ideas. Oh, we'll go and get we'll go and get Liam Manning from uh, MK Dons and uh, yeah, Dyche. Dyche. We'll bring Dyche down there, like um, like we can just pick him up in a in a in a cab running around. You know. Uh, yeah, the one good thing that an international break does it gives you time to think and uh and really it's just the standard of football sometimes it's just awful i can accept losing i've said it many times but i can't stand just the football's horrible Hmm. Uh, if we can find some balance to actually play entertaining attacking football and we lose yeah fair enough you just shrug your shoulders and get on with it you might not be happy for a little while but you can accept it but it's just the level of football. It's not enticing you to watch it, is it? It's a bit like watching England, isn't it? You just not, you just can't be bothered. And uh, I think it's that. I, you know, I, 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 I've tried. Um, I try and follow the away games if I can do on on, on screen. I'm not going to bother tomorrow, listeners. I'm going to go to a game. I'm going to go to a non-league game. And I'll pick up the uh, results tomorrow after I get home and uh, we'll see what we can find out about the performance separately. Which, you know, when you're doing a podcast, I do like to at least see the games, but I just can't be bothered, Neil. I think it's, I think I prefer the uh, the, the, the fresh air, the, the commitment, the, the crunch of a real game to a streams bore fest that, I mean, probably tomorrow's game, we're going to go up to Blackburn and, and put three or four past them now. I've said that. But it, it's 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 a destructive, it's been an eroding season of very poor football. Um, and I, 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 I debate with myself sometimes whether, as a Millwall fan and as somebody that's lived, you know, been been a Millwall fan for many many years, you and I talk on many occasions about the history of the club. You know, this is we are we are historically in a pretty good position from a Millwall perspective. But I, I've just found some of the football we've been playing in recent times. Boring. It's just boring. <laughs> you're being eroded by boredom. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, there's no other way to describe it. Yeah? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> woeful. And and it it this is an entertainment industry. Yes, yeah? it is. Yeah, yeah. You watch this for fun. You're not being paid to watch it unless you're covering the game or whatever. But but it's what you do for enjoyment. And if there's no enjoyment there, you very quickly, yeah, well, I've got a very low boredom threshold. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> I know. Yeah, well, that, yeah, well, that'll come as a major surprise to most. 
<laughs> podcast listeners all that th- th- you get insights into everyone's psyche one way or the other when you do these shows you can't help but reveal yourself um you can try your best but you can't you can't hide you can run but can't hide um yeah i i i agree it is an entertainment business um obviously we care about Millwall and we want them to 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 succeed but you also do have to feel a bit of um, a sense of exhilaration when you've been to the football. I mean, it was the number of messages that we had on the shows recently after the Blackpool game of people just saying, well, we won, but, you know, um, <laughs> there was a flat kind of atmosphere walking back out of the stadium. Um, it's, it's a widespread thing. I think it could be quite destructive in the long term, but um, there we are. Um, tomorrow's trip to Blackburn is, is a difficult. We'll follow it with a, an away game at Rotherham. So we've got two long northern trips. Um, I'm going to pass on tomorrow as well and probably try and catch some uh, footage from the uh, the Rotherham game in midweek. Goalkeeping seems to be the main choice for, for Gary Rowett tomorrow, Neil. Um, whether he keeps Jules Long in goal, who didn't do badly against Blackpool. Or does he bring back the um, the, the, the favourite uh, Bart Bielkowski? Oh, it's hard on Bart to be dropped, but now it'll be hard on Jules Long to be dropped equally. So um, it was exceptionally hard on Bart to be dropped to sing yeah. him out for for some of our defensive woes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he hasn't been afforded an awful lot of protection, has he? In front of him in a lot of games, it, it just your heart goes out to him. But by the same token. Uh, he, he came out with some nonsense about he's not vocal. What a shower of absolute yeah odds wallet that was. That is typical of the fifty-two languages of nonsense that this man. <laughs> signed, yeah, I but, agree. I, I agree. There's a lack of vocal. Um, what's the word I'm scrambling for, your listeners? Vocalism. I don't know. Anyway, there's, 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 there are no leaders of, that are apparent in that side, and I think that. But he that's, that's, to... Yeah, but that's not his job. His no, job. That's not his job. <laughs> His job is to be a, a world world class, an extremely high level goalkeeper, a shot stopper, like as he, good as any I've seen. You know. Yeah, he is. He, if in t- twenty years' time, you and I are doing a podcast on goalkeepers, which <laughs> I really doubt we will be. Twenty uh, years' time, we're still doing it, are we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, just, but whoever is doing it, they will remember Bart as Bart. being yeah. one of our top. Five or six goalkeepers. Uh, one of our great goalkeepers. You, you, you can debate long and hard whether he, which top five, top ten, certainly top five, possibly top three, maybe, because yeah, he's that good. Post-war. Yeah, certainly post war. Yeah. 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 Um, um, post war, he would be in our top five or six. Yeah. But by the same token, George Long came in and didn't put a foot wrong really did he so no so i think he's, he's got a tough choice there um it won't surprise me to see long start because um we we won with him in the in the side and he did nothing wrong i could say absolutely no you know if, if bart bielkowski wasn't available and george long was there i'd be very happy because he looks a pretty solid goalkeeper i think it's this um this this thing of distribution that the modern manager demands of a goalkeeper um it's, there's always this idea in football that you've got to be more than just the position that you're playing in. You've got to be able to do this. You, I mean, we, we ask uh, Jake Cooper to pass the ball when, you know, the best one in the world. The boy's a, a good six foot five uh, defender, but he's not, you know, he, he's not a ball playing uh, magician, is he? So, but we ask things of players that yeah, they but aren't nonsense. blessed with been introduced by bloody Pep Guardiola, isn't it? Do you remember when he first went to Manchester City? Until then. A goalkeeper's job was to stop the ball by any means necessary. Yeah, prevent the prevent a goal, basically. <laughs> yeah, but then all of a sudden Pep Guardiola comes over here and starts trying to teach us how to redefine and re how we actually play the game. Joe Hart, it was, wasn't it? That he that he wasn't yeah, yeah that he wasn't Lionel Messi with his feet. So bombed him out. In fact, he was probably right at the end of the day. Probably- but he- the it probably was Lionel Messi with his hands, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I think uh, Rao, in all of the interviews that we've 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 looked at recently, listeners, he seems set on this 
uh, formation. He seems set on his approach. I, I don't see any changes. We're not going to see a uh, you know a four man this or a four man that. It's going to be the, the three the back three wing backs and uh, so the, the start of the game. Yeah, well, I do know that he does do it in game doesn't he, as they say, but it's always a little bit too late. Well, it's normally when we're chasing a game, it'll, 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 it'll change it up in some form or another. But I, I think as a, as a template, that's how it's going to be. I, I, unless we suffer a catastrophic loss of form, which we, we haven't. I mean, you know, this this has not been a catastrophic season so far. It may have been um, boring, but it's not been a catastrophe. And I don't see the next 10 being much different In if I'm going to be... Honest listeners, so you know we may well be going into the World Cup near with uh, around about the same kind of record that we've we've done in the opening ten, unless you know something uh, unforeseen happens. Yeah, um, perfectly boring. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll still be there at the end of it. We're not going to go anywhere, but um, it, it, it does it does uh, certainly more away at you. Um, times um one thing that did strike me they've rearranged the the Sunderland away fixture which was um scheduled originally for the weekend after the passing of Queen Elizabeth II has now been rescheduled for December the 3rd now a Saturday um 12 30 start it's almost like they don't want anyone to go to Sunderland for, for a 12 30 start I don't know why it has to be a 12 30 kickoff I think that, that'll be in the World Cup so maybe there's a they're trying to think of um you know, England, clashing with England. Yeah, well, England are playing that afternoon, aren't they? Uh, uh, right. Iran or something or other. Yeah, weren't they trying to tell us that football's nothing without fans during the yeah. during lockdown and fans shouldn't be taken for granted? And all Take that of, a pinch of salt. Yeah, Sheffield United have to go to Swansea for a seven forty-five kickoff on the Saturday night, and we have to go to Sunderland. In fact, I don't even think you can get there. On the morning of the game, no, you'd, you'd have to drive up um, probably the night before. I, I reckon. Or you, I don't know. The trains are running. With that, that's another thing. So that's um, AM start, isn't it? If you want to get up there at any, December. yeah, it's not making it easier for people. I, 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 I do agree. Um, but anyway, there we are. So it's Saturday, December the third, which was actually was due to be the last. Um, you know, win, World Cup window weekend, and it was due to restart. On, I think on the tenth, so we've got an earlier restart for the for the league season, if nothing else. Which also has the spin off, um, if you like. Just looking at a story that's on uh, Richard Corley on on the London News here, Neil, that we were targeting Premier League or European opposition as friendlies during the break for the World Cup. I, I imagine these would be behind closed doors jobs. I don't know that. Mill would uh, be uh, lined up against Premier League opposition for paying, paying public, but at least it means less friendly football, more competitive football, if nothing else. Yeah, it, it was a strange one because then people, it, then people, oh, we're going to end up with, with the usual Gillingham, and no, mm. they're they're actually playing competitive football, and so are the non-league clubs. Uh, we're kind of limited who we can play, really, aren't we? Because the police aren't going to allow us to... We can't play West Ham, can we? Yeah, unless it's behind closed doors or yeah. not going to allow us to play Chelsea in front of a paying audience because, no. of, because of the inability of people not to be able to throw things at a game of football or Tottenham. It, it kind of rules out an awful... An awful lot of clubs, doesn't it? And you don't want to play anybody from your division. No, 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 um, no. Well, let's face it. Are they really going to bring somebody over from Europe? For a- I can't imagine it. It's, it's it, uh, this will be somebody like Crystal Palace behind closed doors at one of the training grounds. Um, it'll be that kind of friendly. I don't. I just can't see um, you know paying public. Uh, event in that World Cup period, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. You be in opposition. It'll be one of the Portuguese or Spanish second division side, possibly. Um, how attractive that will be! I don't, I don't know. Bring them over on the freezing cold <laughs> trip to Bermondsey. <laughs> yeah, it, it it just I don't know. It just, it, 
I'm very skeptical about it. I, I, I do think we will play games, but I think you're right. I think we'll play games behind closed doors. I, I know that we played a friendly against Arsenal, didn't we, before yeah. the start of last season behind closed doors. Behind think. closed doors. Uh, it'll be that. I guarantee you, listeners, I guarantee it. Just moving along a, a little agenda here, Neil. Um, I, you sent the message around on the on the group chat, haven't they, that the under-21s were live on YouTube, which was, and I, I managed to catch the the second half. This was a game at Reading, which we finished up losing, um, I think it finished 2-1 to Reading. It was 2-0 um, uh, till quite late, and then I think we got a late goal for the under-21s. But it was a really nice idea to broadcast it by Reading live on, on YouTube. And um, I think the Millwall uh, games was at, at the Den are behind this um, uh, Mill TV paywall, aren't they? I don't think we put them out live on, on YouTube in that way. But it was it was good to see. Yeah, we have done in the past that have been on YouTube. Uh, but, but this newfound uh, Millwall philosophy of trying to nick a few quid off people. <laughs> the opportunity. Uh, two two pound fifty for the food hub as well. If you park your car, apparently, uh, if you do go and see a, a, an under twenty one, kill us in the car, mom. Yeah, yeah, for for donkey's years, you're able to park your car down there at a reserve game, or the ten people that would park there. Mm. Just see, I, I don't know, but no, it was a great idea by Reading. Uh, a lot of clubs do it. But I think Millwall have, Millwall have just introduced this new all singing or dancing Millwall TV, haven't they? And I subscription not, channel, yeah. Um, yeah, I noticed that they, that for the podcast they've got an extra in a new studio, so that's obviously mm. um, cost them a bit of money. Yeah, but I know that. Uh, yeah, but I know that equipment and that has to be paid for, but. Come on, stick it on YouTube. You can always make ad revenue because not everybody can watch the game, so so they might watch it later on. And it, it, it's just penny pinching. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. I mean, it was it was basic coverage, listeners. I mean, it was basic uh, one camera on the halfway line. You're quite high up at the Majeski Stadium, so it was like a, a, an expansive view. Let's put it that way. But you could follow it. The broadcast was um, was a good quality on on YouTube. No commentary, no replays, um, but good enough. You know, certainly past the I caught the second half, so past 45 minutes of my um, Tuesday afternoon. I think that Max does one. Yeah, but that was always the beauty of living in London mm. uh, in the in the seventies, eighties, nineties, and very recently was going to football combination games in an afternoon, uh, two p.m. kickoff, and uh, used to see all manner of variety of first team players turning up uh, playing for. For whatever team, a trialist. I once saw Nigel Callahan, okay, Watford player on the bench for Millwall. John Moss, the Premier League referee, played some football combination games for Millwall when he was uncertain about teaching or playing football. So I'm a big, big fan of the football combination, or was a big fan of the football combination and under 21s, under 23 footballs. I think it's a great way of whiling away an afternoon. During the day, yeah, which is interesting. When Reading had Andy Carroll playing from up front, he made a big impact. He scored the second goal. The sheer physical presence was well, it was good. Good learning curve for our young defenders, including Hayden Muller and uh, and, and one or two others. Um, it was a chance for to get to look at some of these players. You only hear about Abdul Malik, for example. Uh, Boateng was playing, I think. Um, it wasn't probably wasn't our best day because we've been playing some pretty good stuff recently. I'm just looking at uh, notes here. We beat Charlton four one. We're at top of the, uh, the, the the development league. Um, this was our first defeat of the season against the side that actually included two experienced Championship players in in Carroll and I think Matey Mighty. Can never remember how to pronounce his name. But so Reading were on the day a strong side. But it was interesting, and it's it's good to see the youngsters. You do get a sense of who's who and how good some of them are. Um, this wasn't our best day, as I've said, but you did get a sense that there was some talent in that side, Neil. Yeah, no, there is. Um, yeah, undoubtedly. And uh, 
And interestingly, they appear to be playing a different brand of football to the first. They do. Yeah, that's right. Passing it's style. Yeah. Also to be found by Kevin Nugent, which is quite unusual. And I think generally, I think reserve teams try and uh, uh, reflect what the first team are doing. Trust Almighty, can you imagine that pitching up at <laughs> on the Tuesday <laughs> afternoon to watch the under 23s and you watch a version of Nugent Ball? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I was struck by uh, you're right. I mean, the, I, and I would have thought the idea of under 21 football is that you can produce players that can then slot into the template that the, the, uh, the, the first team are playing. Um, the under twenty ones did seem to be more what I would term passing style. They were they were passing and moving quite well. Some talented boys there that you could, I thought I can't see many of these fitting straight into Gary Rowett's first team because um, they, them, they, the passing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's just, I mean, just following on, this is a story on the London News Online listeners that Mills promising young stars are attracting interest from other clubs. Um, and yes, they will do. Of course, that's football. Um, clubs are always monitoring what other clubs have got and, and you know, money comes in for players. But um, if I were, I mean, even including Tyler Bury in the first team now, you know, if, if you are a skillful winger, you, you might have to think about, is my career best served here under this management or should I move somewhere else to get minutes? Because it's quite hard to see a place for some of these talented boys in the first first team. I, th I think I put it on the group chat that you'd like to see the likes of Abdul Malik and uh, there's, yeah. A, yeah. there's a couple of them uh, that have been playing really well, and you quite like to see them integrated into Give the them a go, yeah. yeah, or at least actually travel with the squad to a game so they can see what it's like, and you're dangling that little carrot in front of them. I think the problem at Millwall is we don't take a risk uh, with a lot of these players. Instead of just putting them in and let's just see how they go, mm. Yeah, it, we almost wait too long. Isaac Alofa is a classic example, isn't it? He's drawing his pension soon, hasn't he? His first team start. There we are. Yeah. Just a years and has played what two three games it's ridiculous moving along um we see that gary row is running in the london marathon which is actually this weekend listeners i think it's sunday um london marathon this is in aid, aid of the lions field a great course well done to gary row also want to mention my friend uh bill bill henshaw it's not his real surname that's henshaw on, on the henshaw 41 on online he also did a um a walk for the lions food hub I will stick a link to Bill's um, appeal because that's also for the same great cause. And he's done really well with less, obviously, uh, less publicity other than social media we've been able to generate for him. So I'll give that a little bit of a boost. But well done to Gary Rowett for also running in the London Marathon. He's probably going to come in with some super duper time, I'd imagine. You know, there's not an ounce of fat on the man. He's got that kind of the gaunt look of the uh, long distance runner about him. So he's probably looking at a sub, but uh, I don't know what three hours or something like that but um well done to him for it yeah no obviously i used to sit next to bill his dad bill and his yeah. son bill. <laughs> i think he's a uh, great guy great family absolutely uh, proper move yeah yeah to do something like that he's uh he's fantastic and for a great cause and he actually stepped in to help Kelly out when she needed something moved from Colchester. So, yeah, well, I know he's a bit of a lefty, but yeah. <laughs> I love you. I love your family. And, uh, uh, There's you a Millwall, Millwall <laughs> version of a left left wing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, no, well, yeah, no, you've done. Yeah, well, that was great. It's great to see Gary Rabbit running the London Marathon. I can't even think about it doing 26 miles let alone actually doing it coming out in palpitations and cold sweats and all <laughs> yeah and good luck to everybody else uh yeah well, there's been a wrath of people on hoff with mates that are doing it and they're Gary other... alexander i saw uh yeah. running yeah. london marathon yeah it, 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 yeah i just wish them everyone the best of luck and uh hope they raise a nice sum of money for whatever charity they're doing it for. 
Absolutely. We're going to take a short break, listeners, and we're going to come back and consider one or two other issues outside the realms of Millwall. We'll be right back. Achtung, Millwall. Welcome back, dear listeners. Um, Neil, um, we're talking now about wider things than just the Lions. Well, I suppose it could include the Lions. Um, there's been a few uh, things online about non-league clubs in particular, but I reckon this could include some of the lower level football league clubs and the cost of the energy crisis, you know, the cost of living crisis, energy crisis, the cost of um, staging matches under floodlights. Um, There's an interesting debate because one of the clubs, I think it was Mansfield Town, had asked for permission to um, play outside the the 3 p.m. kickoff time during the, the, the darker months. Um, but there was an interesting post on um, on Twitter. Uh, this is from uh, others include Didcot Town and other non-league clubs at that level. But um, it was a reply from uh, Dale Vince, who I think was Forest Green, saying, um, "Depends on your floodlights. If you've got LED LED floodlights, the cost isn't that that much compared with um, whatever floodlight bulbs they've got at Didcot and uh, and others. Um, apparently, that's where the cost lies." But uh, so there's a bit of a debate as to whether that's a good idea or a bad idea, playing outside the three o'clock start time traditionally. Yeah, I do know that my local league, as we touched upon earlier, the South West Peninsula League, they've yeah. given permission for for uh, for games to kick off earlier, if that's yeah. what they feel. I know th- there was some... Some, I think the I think the EFL or whatever they're called these days, tried cool. to justify their decision by saying there is a knock-on effect. Uh, obviously, I guess people might already have booked trains and things like that. I think that you could take the pragmatic approach as long as you give people enough notice. And yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't mean a fortnight's notice. If they suddenly say, well, in December. In January, when it does get dark at 4 p.m., or R4, doesn't it? Uh, that you that you can kick off early if you want. I think it should be discretionary for the clubs uh, to decide. I agree. And this high-handed approach of no, you will not do it. It, it obviously. It's a- no, it yeah, it's nobody. I, I found the tweet. This is from Dale Vince, who was Forest Green Rovers chairman, which is known as a uh, green, in whatever term you want to use, a green football club. But it's also business as well. He says uh, he spoke to TalkSport about the idea of using earlier kickoffs to save electricity from floodlight use. It says he says it seems to make unlikely to make a big difference. Nobody had the numbers, but we took a look, and it costs a hundred pound per game to have the lights on. Nothing in the scheme of things. Um, I think that depends on the quality of your floodlights. Um, I imagine Forrest Green, because he's got money, um, have spent money on these uh, LED floodlights, which will be good to run. But I doubt that Didcot Town or some of the others at that level would have done that. So they're probably using old school, I don't know if they use bulbs or whatever they're called, but uh, that one, lights that burn the energy uh, more. Now, you could argue they should be replacing them because it's good business to do that, but... Um, I think you're right. I think it's got to be a club discretion thing, but there should be permission given to kick off at one o'clock, two o'clock, one thirty, whatever, whatever suits. Yeah, no, I think that certainly, certainly at non-league level, I think a hundred pound makes quite a bit of difference, doesn't it? Because well, it they're... does. Yeah, that was a reply. It did cut hundred eighty pound per hour. They use old halogen bulbs, sixteen floodlights, quoted thirty eight thousand pounds to replace with LED. Now. I don't know much about Didcot Town, but I'm going to guess that 38 grand to ribs floodlights doesn't come easy. And and, and those bills, 180 pound per hour, um, that's not you know that can make a, a make or break kind of difference. So if you can kick off earlier, um, and I'd include football league clubs in this if it's if it's going to help somebody, but make it an individual choice and request. Um, I mean, yeah. back in the 70s, we kicked off during the minor strike. We'd kick off regularly at. One o'clock, twelve thirty kickoffs, two o'clock kickoffs. You know, it's quite common. Yeah, well, midweek games were played on a Wednesday afternoon, weren't they? With a what with an yeah. what with an early kickoff, and it should be up to individual clubs. I know we've just mentioned that our game at Sunderland kicks off at half twelve. Mm. That would probably be an extreme. 
Yeah, yeah, that's not related to floodlighting, though. Is it Sunderland won't be worried about their floodlight costs? Well, um, that's that's the game, basically. And then it's not carte blanche, and yeah, it ought to be up to an individual club uh, because maybe the associated energy costs with everything because you have to light up car parks, you have to light up this. That's car- true. Yeah, the stadium itself has to be lit, doesn't it? So um, it's not just the floodlighting. It's just not the floodlights. It's everything. And to be honest, people do feel safer in winter in daylight, don't they? It's just not. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. But just the, on the on the non-league side of things, but okay, I think you can extend this to football league clubs, listeners. Um, we're talking about the, the floodlighting costs, but also... Uh, numbers going to non-league games are holding up really well, and many clubs are now going for discounted ticket prices. I think that's a good idea because, you know, we are living in a, a cost-of-living crisis for, for many, many reasons. Um, so any clubs that can do something to reduce the cost of, of watching a game, that must have a, a positive impact in, in gate terms, Neil, I would have thought. Yeah, I... Put it, I mentioned it on the group chat the other day. I'm, yeah, well, I'm not a lefty in any way, shape or form. But I think at the moment uh, it's difficult to afford your mortgage, your energy bills. Yeah. Uh, and then you're talking two away games in a week or two home games in a week. You, yeah, but it's fine if you've got a season ticket. Uh or you, or you bought. Or you got the money, but it's not. That's, that's yeah. not everyone at the moment. It's, it's tough times around. So um, and I think it'll have a knock-on effect if this does carry on. I think you're going to find that yeah, yeah. Well, the start of next season, if this does go on into the summer, which by all accounts is quite likely to, because there's yeah. no chance of Putin admitting he's wrong and chucking up his hands, is there, and saying, "Oh no." And everything returns to the hunky He'd be, he'd be throwing his, his hand of cards in, but also accepting a bullet in the head, I think. That, that's the problem and, <laughs> for him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's not going to happen. So No, 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 I agree, I agree. I think um, that in the summer, people are going to have an interesting choice. Do you pay the bills or do you or do you take out a £600 Millwall season ticket? Yeah, um, um, I think that I think hard hard conversations need to be had in football generally. Millwall is our show, our club. Um, but it's interesting. Non-league clubs re- can react probably in, in a way that maybe professional clubs might struggle with. I don't know, but um, certainly it's going to be a thing. It's going to be a thing over the next year or so. I think the, the cost of living crisis. Go to Millwall. I think if you, it's, it's not cheap. No, yeah. I agree. Think- decide to go on the day of a game and sometimes you do decide to go on the day of a game i think it can cost you up to about 32 quid yeah yeah it's pricey it's, you, you think hard about it and then you know you've got the uh the entertainment yeah. question are you going to spend 32 pound being bored to death <laughs> yeah exactly and <laughs> or not yeah we, yeah we spend 32 quid because they put this ridiculous surcharge of if you buy a ticket on the day of the game, it costs more than mm. in a free, free game. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always stuck in my throat that yeah, but that stealth tax, and I think it was some of like wedding that started it initially. I think uh, the game needs to be more imaginative, Neil. I think the game needs to think. Um, you know, if it's interested in in promoting its 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 products, I'm going to keep using management speak. Neil's going to do his nuts if I keep talking like this. Um, but if it's interested in promoting itself to a wider public and maintaining the public it's got, then they do need to be more imaginative, ticket wise, and, and in many other directions, because this the cost of living crisis, as you've said, is and you're right, is not going away in a hurry so um you know that's, that's going to affect all, all aspects of our game um moving along if we if we may um my eye fell upon we've mentioned money money a few times in this show um the premier league a, a, a cabal of premier league clubs and they want to do away with fa cup replays in this and they're hanging it on the fixture congestion generated as a consequence of uh the, the queen's uh passing away recently apparently and plus the world cup and plus all the other bits and pieces that go on um do away with fa cup replays which are already much reduced from 
my youth when you'd get multiple replays of games, which I accept you can't do anymore. But the, even, even the one replay that we do get now, they want to do away with it. They want to finish it on the day. Um, seems like a bit of a destruction of the competition in many respects. Absolutely. Uh, couldn't agree more with that. It, 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 and it seems to be the likes of, I don't know, Klopp and people like mm. that suddenly come over here and they want to venger. They want to... Yeah, they want to... Yeah, they want uh, to uh, run our game. And uh, to be honest, FA Cup replays are a great thing. I think what they should do is they should actually scrap the League Cup. Yeah. And yeah, but let's do away with that. I know they're talking about a possible option is that clubs in Europe don't play in the League Cup. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, as a Millwall fan, we only ever have one or two games in the League Cup. Anyway. We'll get out of it fast, don't we? Yeah, we we'll oh, It's an unloved competition. It's always been unloved, really. It had a bit of a heyday in the 70s, the League Cup, but ne it's never achieved the glamour or, um, I'll use the word, the love that the FA Cup generates. Um, it's always been a bit of a struggle, the League Cup, and maybe it's always been a midweek, um, you know, uh, competition in any case so you don't get that um third round glamour and romance and all, all the other stuff that the fa cup brings with it I, I personally wouldn't be sad to see it go i mean i i, I agree it's become such a um it's, it's it's lost a lot of its meaning in recent times and um you know, not anymore but whereas yeah. fa cup replays yeah you go to manchester united and you eke out a draw Part of the excitement is to get Manchester United back at home. Yeah, back yeah. at your small ground, wherever that may be. Yeah, I agree. Down at the Den. And I think a lot of it is to do with the fact that a lot of Premier League clubs are now owned by Americans. It does away with the... It, I, I think you're right. I mean, I, I, I don't particularly want to pin it on um, any any particular group, but I think what hap what is hard, I think, particularly in the American model to understand is two things. One is the concept of uh, as relegation, the fact that a big club, a named club, can, through uh, on-field mishaps, find themselves pitched out of the league into a, into a second division. They, they don't have anything like that in any of the major sports in, in North America. Um, and the other thing they don't have in, in North American sports is the, the idea of giant killing. Get days where Welling United can take the field versus Arsenal and have a shot. You know, the, the lucky goal that goes in late, the Rod Radford shot. Everyone, they get play a match of the day every now and again for Hereford in the 70s. You don't get those moments. They don't exist in, in, in those places. And even in the European context, you don't get that really so much in in foreign cup competitions because a they're not taken very seriously and so secondly if Bayern Munich do play some village side for in the German competition it's not they, everyone knows they're not taking it seriously to start off with so it doesn't have quite the um the meaning that the FA Cup has always always had I, I think it's a I think it's a typical um modern day uh, football business thing that everyone was that phrase everyone knows the value the price of everything but the value of nothing and i think if you lose these things a bit like that little monologue we had at the start you know, about cricket on a sunday afternoon you're losing something that doesn't actually have a a price it's it's, it's deep and, and you lose you're losing something bigger than just one more football match for a big club it's it's very sad if they, if they bring this to pass in my opinion yeah, but what is also being forgotten is that these Premier League clubs, they've got big enough squads. They can cope they do. with it. Yeah. It's, it's more to do with they're trying to... It's like a dick-swinging contest, isn't it? We've got, more, <laughs> yeah, we've got more money than you. We've got more power than you. So we're going to assert it over you. And we're going to tell you what to do, and you will be subservient to it. You will obey what we say, because here's a little bit of money, and we're going to dangle it over you until we get what we want. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. To be honest, I don't care about the Premier League. I watch it on a Sunday afternoon because it's entertainment, isn't it? 
I, I, it does make me laugh. I've on on the phone. I've got Sky Sports. They they pop up. I should take it off because it annoys me every time they do it. But partly it amuses me when Chelsea have made some forty million pound for a player I've never heard of in my life. Some Portuguese bloke has they bid fifty million for him. Like it's like 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 it's news. Like um, I don't know. You know, something's happened in the world that is that is true news, and that pops up like it's like it's on the same same level. Um, Especially for us, though, that they do transfer deadline day with deadlines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's right. really it's just repeating crap all day isn't it you, you can watch it for an hour in the morning an hour in the evening and very little will change you're trying to go in over to somebody at arsenal arsenal won't be making any signings today right yeah, it <laughs> enriched my life to no end yeah and then they keep on going back to them well, we well we did tell you that Arsenal won't be making any signings. Twenty-four and, uh, hour news cycle got to be filled up with anything. Oh, and yeah, well then somebody might have been spotted somewhere. That was the great one down at Millwall, isn't it? Oh, I was, yeah, my <laughs> grand cleaner's mama's. Uh, who was the one they used to talk about on the House of Fun? Was it John John Osler? These were the players from the way back, and there was always the talk that we were interested in this. Yeah. Uh, his name John Oster Osler. I can't never remember. His yeah, name. John Osler. Uh, and he was always seen in the Millwall Calf, or he's seen at the uh, the Curry Den or something. <laughs> Jimmy Floyd Axelbank, we're expecting. Jimmy Floyd was seen in the ancient foresters having a pint, you know, because he's keen to come to the den. Oh dear. Um let's let's close let's close our show, Neil, with um we've got a bit of scandal, really, listeners. I think it's scandalous. This is a story that you, you picked up on, Neil. I'd, I'd seen it, which is um a discontinued scheme now, in fairness to the EFL. Um but this is this is the, the baleful influence of gambling in in football. But uh, apparently, English football clubs, English football league clubs, are still because the deal is still in its last dying embers, receiving a cut of gamblers' losses as part of their their betting um, partner scheme, um, Sky Bet. Apparently, these clubs received a slice of uh, the losses generated by gamblers, which would be the many many people out there listening to this show, possibly. Um, the clubs are on a direct earner as a result of people overstretching themselves on on on, uh, on football betting or, or whatever betting um, on the peer accumulators. <laughs> <laughs> lose a lot of money if you go for high high scoring values on for Millwall this season. I know that much. I've yeah. always found gambling and sport odd bedfellows. Neil, I, I, people often think I'm against gambling, and I'm and I'm not. Um, I was brought up in a family that knew about gambling, um, horses and dogs for the most part. But um, I just find gambling in any sport, I'd include, I mean, football is the biggest, so it's the one that gets the most, um, you know, spotlight put on it. But you could throw in cricket, you could probably throw rugby in, in terms of the baleful influence of gambling, spot fixing, all this kind of thing that goes on around the world it's it's never a good thing um but it generates the drug of money doesn't it that's 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 the reason we have it yeah to be honest we all like uh chucking a couple of quid on the first goal scorer mm. the games every now and again and and the crazy accumulators that that offer you big big returns for for predicting 15 results for a pound or 50p but nobody forces people to gamble i'm not no companies no. per se full stop and i don't necessarily agree that they should be banned but it but it just seems something slightly distasteful that as a millwall fan because they ask you when they sign when you sign up to a lot of these websites especially uh, uh, Skybet, yeah. which team you support. Okay. Um, and I always thought it was a bit odd. Why do they want to know what team I support? Now it all makes sense. <laughs> They're on a slice of the action. That's why, aren't they? Um, well, yeah. yeah. Well, they were. This deal, this deal is being phased out. Um the, the, the deal continues, and I think it was a, a X number of years, so it continues till 23-24 when Skybet's contract expires. 
but the EFL said all sign up links via EFL digital have now been removed. So you can't sign up for this kind of thing now. Well, maybe I don't ask that question. You can probably still sign up for Scott, but they may not ask the question as to which uh, football team you, you, you follow. But it's just interesting the million and one ways, the myriad ways that football uh, uses to extract money. It's, um, yeah, we were talking uh, about it earlier on, weren't we, with the three pound for. For watching a reserve game. To park your car. Yeah. yeah, to park your car, even though that money is going to the food hub, I think they're probably testing the waters. So next season when uh, yeah, when they don't give it to the food hub or the season after. The char the charge is established then, I suppose. Yeah. And yeah. You say, well, the charge has been around for three years. Uh it just Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. It, it's one ways of yeah we were talking about on the group chat about Millwall TV weren't we you know that's five or a month for yeah um, yeah it's just a little bit it just seems to be a little bit more well, I haven't subscribed to that and I, I slightly go around in circles five or a month's not a huge amount of money so I could I could get it if I wanted to um, but I struggle with it. In why am I struggling? With it? It's because most of it is stuff that I think you sh you should get version. You should get you should hear from your club manager post game anyway. Um, I'm not sure I want to be paying to listen to Gary Rowett. The highlights packages, the, the game highlights, might be the only bits that are of any real interest to me, Neil. Well, Other than goals, that, I, I, yeah, but the goals are put on YouTube. The two minutes, yeah. so they give you more in depth. I think they do like a 10 minute highlight. John Rankin, that was right. John, John, I took my hat off to because he said he does re watch it all, which is a lot. But they, um, they, I, I think they the, do a 10 minute length and, um, you know, package rather than just the goals, which is like a, a splurge of major incident and then the goals. Um, but otherwise, it's all it's inane, it's all kind of like you know, players having quizzes and 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 stuff like that and I, i'm not really interested in that so i i, I, I think i'm gonna be programming now isn't it it's shouldered programming that they try and they try and get you invested into it funnily enough we were talking about nostalgia if yeah. they put all games on there games from the 70s and the 80s i'd probably pay a five for a month just to watch them alone yeah but yeah there that I really want to watch, to be honest. They don't put reserve games from from Claremont Road on there, do they? Because apparently, I don't think so. Don't think so. No. Because apparently, it's too difficult to to get to bought. stream it. Yeah. And again, yeah, but then again, county cricket have really upped their game in that in the last two or three seasons. They have all manner of games from all manner of places. Well, they do, they do, and they have, they have some pretty good production values. I mean, you're not going to get Sky TV production on those listeners, but you will get two commentary, you know, a, a lead voice and then a, a yeah, call it, a, the colour comment they call that, don't they? And well, you'll get cameras on the alt back. alternate ends cameras, yeah, um, pretty good. So it just shows what can be done. But just going back to to the betting point. Uh, I'd be interested to know how much Millwall have made. And I do think the club should be looking at giving that money to the food hub. And just that's a just, good idea. That's a good idea. Just to actually do something good with it. That's helped people that that may be affected by gambling. Maybe people can't afford to pay their bills because they've because they have a problem and things like that. So they well, need that's right. It's like alcohol. I mean, some people can have a drink and not be an alcoholic. Some people are unable to do that, and they, they do have issues. So you're making money often from people with issues. And I think there's something – I think distasteful is, is the right choice of word, Neil, because, um, you know, we, we're not living in a monastery, listeners, but equally I don't think it's right that <laughs> gamblers' losses do fund football clubs. I, I just think there's something wrong in that the scheme has been discontinued i want to finish with that so they're not they're not signing up newbies to it and it will finish next season 23 24 yeah, thousand pounds that millwall have made yeah give it to kelly and the food yeah. hub so they can do some good with that money as opposed to it 
sitting in a bank account and not doing an awful lot at Millwall. They just, I don't know. You know, we haven't gone all woke. Yeah, at least I haven't. Nick's always been woke. <laughs> <laughs> I want to find out what this woke business means sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear there we are we're going to finish it there listeners um let's have a score prediction you know let's do let's do regular podcast stuff and talk about a score prediction for blackburn away then rotherham away before we face middlesbrough next saturday how, how do you see it wins losses draws uh blackburn i i, I think i record that there's not that good recently no no it's not We've won there for a little while. I don't think it's terribly good at Rotherham. They're both these long, long uh, trips up okay. north, aren't they? A midweeker as well for Rotherham. I know that, but on separate sides of the Pennines. I think. Uh, I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for one-one tomorrow. Yeah, and I'm going to go for a win at Rotherham. The chances think, to win them. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for two-one. Because I don't think we've got a clean sheet in us. I'm no, I don't think. I, don't, I think you're right. I'm going to go for four points out of the two fixtures. I, 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 I fancy us to go to Blackburn and win it tomorrow. I, I don't know why. It's irrational. Um, it's my seventh son of a seventh son, Gypsy Heritage listeners coming out. But I'm going to go for a one nil win for the Lions at Blackburn tomorrow, and a tough, tough trip to Rotherham maybe one each up there I don't know um, but a win tomorrow and a draw midweek for me so four points we're both calling it in different different ways the same um, but there we are let's keep our fingers crossed for that um, let's, let's keep our fingers crossed for some entertainment as well listeners uh, Neil and I will be back next week Neil won't we ahead of the, the home fixture versus Middlesbrough next Saturday the 8th we'll be back on the Friday for some weekend yep. sir a huge thank you to Neil for joining me. Yeah, no problem at all, mate. Yeah, no, well, we'll either be on a high through uh, through six points or a low after two defeat. We'll be building the guillotine in the car park again. <laughs> there we are thank you for listening listeners uh enjoy the weekend wherever you're going whatever you're doing good luck to all those making a trip up to blackburn and rotherham midweek and until next friday from neil and myself it's arriva dirty millwall bye for now Achtung, millwall.